the viewport of Blender has become a lot faster and uses way less memory now, which is cool if you're having big scenes. But there are also improvements on the smaller scale, like for example, absolute grid snapping. Let me first illustrate you the problem. Say I have moved this cube around a little bit and now I want to snap it exactly to the grid I have in the background. Beforehand, this wasn't possible. So let me first show the old behavior. And that would be if I turn on snapping and increment, then I can snap this cube in increments, but not to the grid in the background, but rather to a, let's say, virtual grid that's relative to the position the cube had before, which is of course useful, but not exactly what most people want. And now I can turn on absolute grid snapping and it will actually snap directly to the grid we see in the background. So now we have a global grid to snap to, a feature this war that was requested quite a lot and it's finally there. And the cool thing about is it is that it's also working in the node editor. So let me go to the node editor and snapping is still on because I turned it on down here. And for example, the viewer here, when I move it now, it snaps exactly to the grid in the background and also the width of the snapping for each step. So the step size has been reduced to a level that's actual, actually usable. So now the grid snapping is really, really nice, even in the compositor, which is another thing where I'd really like to thank the developers. The next thing I'd like to show you is about the playback of animations once you have rendered them. Here I've created a simple animation. Let's now quickly render it using OpenGL render animation. And once this is done, I can preview this animation using render play rendered animation. And this is nothing new, but the new thing is that we have a few more controls in there. For example, I can now hit space to pause the animation like in actually every other movie player out there. And if I hit space again, it continues. And now we also have a cursor that indicates the current position inside the animation. You can simply turn this on by hitting I. So pretty nice. And another thing I'd like to note, but I cannot show, show right now is if you would have rendered your animation using sound, for example, directly to a movie file and previewed it using the Blender animation preview, then it would now also play back this sound, which is also really cool.